Hey friends, how's it going? We jumped back into the project. 268 giveaway saw. I had to put this thing down for, I don't know, it's been about a month. I had to order some parts. Uh, it happens. Any of you guys that work on power saws know that you need parts from time to time. I thought I had everything to build this saw, but I was missing a couple of things. So, um, them are the brakes. Anyhow, let's re-familiarize ourselves with this project. Uh, I need to re-familiarize. I wrote everything down. Again, friends, super important that you keep notes because you never know when you're going to pick a saw back up. At least I don't. So, uh, friend of the channel, Adam Winchittle, found this at a local Husqvarna dealer and uh, donated it to the channel. Adam, thank you, buddy. This is such a nice saw. Like, I would say this is an 8 or a 9 out of 10 condition-wise. The only reason why it's not a 10, it does have a few little dings on it, but otherwise, like, this is as clean as these saws get. Um, it's just, just a real beauty. I took the saw down. Um, it needed it needed a top end. The, the top end that's on it, the plating's a little bit worn. The rings were worn. It was actually starting to bleed compression back through the rings and you can actually see it in the original cylinder. I'm going to show you guys that. Anytime I can show you guys things, it's a good, it's a good thing. Got a new camera, new phone. Okay, friends, see the soot and the upper transfer in the corner right here. Okay. You guys see that right there. Okay, and see how sooty the lower transfers are? This saw had massive blow-by. And what happens is it leaks past the ring, goes through the top and into the bottom end. Really hard on bottom ends if you if that happens. So this thing needs a top end. Um, might be able to clean this one up in the future, but uh, I've been really happy with Highway's top ends. Like extremely happy. So... If something works, I'm going to use it. These highway top ends are, okay, it's just a regular highway top end. Um, they're good. I haven't had any trouble with them. I have a couple on my saws and no issues there. So if you guys are looking for highway, please go see Ryan at Wolf Creek Saw Shop. Um, this, this top end and this top end came from him. He's a great guy. Uh, if you guys need highway or meteor, he carries a few other things too. Go check out Wolf Creek Saw Shop. And uh, if you're looking for anything, give Ryan a shout. I mentioned it before in another video. If you're from Canada, I, I'm even sure other places. Um, send him an email and let him know where you are and what you want. And he'll help you out with the shipping. So I think that's important. Um, because the way his website is set up. It's U.S. shipping only, but if you guys give him an email, he'll help you out. So, um, thanks for thanks for going over and checking him out the last time I mentioned him. I appreciate that, guys. If we can help out any small businesses uh, that help out this channel, that means a lot to me. A lot of good people out there, and, and if I can help people, I'm definitely going to do it. Okay, so in the last video, the bearings were no good in this saw. Part of when you have... A leaky ring and you get all that that uh, that soot going into the bottom end is it leans out the mixture and it makes the bottom end really dirty and often that ends up making the bearings fail so I split this saw I put new crank bearings in it um, SKFs no FAG bearings those are Italian uh, they work really really well I put FAG bearings put a new crank seal in this side this had a little ding where the crank seal goes. I put moto seal around it. Uh, I dressed it up with some 600 grit paper just to take the edge off. And I pressed that in there with moto seal. That should seal it up. Okay, uh, crank is good and tight. So we should have a good bottom end. Now what I'm doing in this saw is I'm going to build a, a good, strong, all-purpose firewood saw. Um, something for the average guy that isn't going to be too orangutan. Um, I want to talk about something right now, friends, as we're getting into this project. When you start porting saws, if you turn them up too hot, they, they're they like a dragster. 
they're not going to idle as good often. They're going to they're going to be a little bit more peaky and they're not going to tolerate um, doll chains or overheating. When you're running a ported power saw, if you're in a big big cut, you guys will watch me when I when I'm cutting. I'll go a third through the log and then I blip the throttle and pull it up a little bit or I stop. Um, that's to get bar oil going, clean my kerf and not holding an engine to the pin for a whole cut is, is really good for it. Not to say that you can't, but I think it's just prudent, especially if you have a saw that's cutting at 13, 14,000 RPM and, and you can do that quite easily. Um, you're going to get a lot of heat. So just a little tip. Okay, friends, I want to bring you guys in close. Let's talk about the top end that we chose. There's a lot of top ends for these. I like this new camera on my new phone. I smashed my phone uh, last weekend, friends. You ever drop your phone and smash it? <laughs> Been there, done that. Okay. I just want to show you guys this chassis here, okay? 162, 61, 266, 268, 272. They're all the same crankcase. Now there are some variances. Um, the older ones, uh, it has a, a trigger, crank trigger and a coil here, okay? So you will have a two piece ignition. The flywheel is different on some of the models, okay? Um, this is a fine thread clutch. You can also get a coarse thread clutch, so. Um, but more or less, you can, these are all, these crankcases, you can mix and match parts quite easily. And I, I want to show you, this is a 162, uh, 162, 630 Super Johnson at top end. Okay, there it is right there. Okay, this is a 48 millimeter top end. When you... When you have 48 by 34, that's a 60 cc saw, roughly, okay? Again, 630 Super, these are strong saws. If you go 50 millimeter, you have a 266 or a 268. This happens to be a 268 top end, okay? Uh, 268, a little bit bigger transfers. Um, and there's some, there can be some variances in the intake, okay? There's two intakes for these. You guys will notice the difference. 272, 268, share an intake, okay? Uh, 266, uh, 162, 61, 630 John Surratt all have the same intake, okay? And you can tell this one's square, right? It goes like that, okay? But you can mix and match, okay? This is a 272 top end, 52 millimeter. That's one of those tight nickels. I had Ryan send us one of these so that we could all see it. Look at that. Friends, for the price of these, I mean, you can't go wrong. You just can't. They're good. They're good top ends. Okay, so this is the top end I'm going to go with on this build. 268, 50 millimeter. It's going to be a 66 and a half ish cc saw. And I went with a pop-up. Now, the reason why I went with a pop-up... And again, good old cutaway. This is a stock saw. You start building compression there, okay? When it closes the exhaust port. Here's your intake. Here's your exhaust, okay? If you raise your exhaust roof, say, here, let's take a marker. Say this exhaust roof is at 104. There, we'll put this all the way down. Say you raise it to 98, okay? Okay, so pretend that marker is your new exhaust roof. So instead of starting to build compression there, okay, you build compression there. That difference could be 20, 30, 40 pounds of static compression when you're pulling it over, okay? Now you see this? This is an 028 Super. That has a factory pop-up. What that does is, think about it. If this was flat here, you would only be compressing that much volume. When you do a pop-up, that gives it a little more squish, right? It squeezes it more. That'll bring your compression back. So, in a regular saw, and you can see this is just a tiny little pop-up. 
in a regular saw, if you want to go higher exhaust roof, it's a good idea to have a pop-up. Okay? This just gives me nothing but options. I can do so many different things to this saw. I can go a high exhaust roof. I can go a lower exhaust roof and still have a ton of grunt. I like a pop-up. Now... Okay, so, okay, move our cutaway over. Now, one thing I will say, I tend to not build super high compression saws. And a lot of people ask me why. There are two types of porting, and uh, they both work. There's nothing wrong with either type. I don't do high compression saws generally. I do have some saws that thump, okay, but in winter, it is really, really hard to start a high compression saw here. If you got your if you got your saws in the back of your truck and it's 30 below, often you just can't pull them over hard enough or you break you tear up recoil parts, especially recoils that have like plastic in them. You can shatter, and I've done it many times, especially these saws. I've shattered recoils cutting in 30 below. Because we do often here. You find wood, good firewood. Um, you find good firewood here and it's 30 below, you're going to get it. Okay, friends, this saw here, this is that John Surrett, okay? Go back and look in the channel. I built this on the channel. This has a custom pop-up that I built. About 40,000, same top end as this. You can hear it, okay? This saw was built strictly as a test saw, okay? Uh, high, high RPM, high compression, that thing cuts really well. Well, the reason why is because it has a pop-up. If I cut that pop-up off the top of that saw, it wouldn't run anywhere near the way it does. So I've kind of found a balance with that saw. High RPM with pretty stout compression. Now, what are the drawbacks to that kind of saw? Well, I already lost a bearing in that saw, friends. Um, again, it's in a playlist. Uh, after 15 tanks, I think, I started, I could feel something. Um, when you start porting saws and playing with them all the time, you kind of feel things. Well, I felt the bearing going. I caught it before that saw let go. Uh, put new bearings in it, half a dozen tanks later, it's still good. I'm not sure if that build, longevity-wise, is would be good for an everyday work saw. I'm going to find out, though. The longer I run it, the more I'm starting to trust it, so... Um, again, so you don't want to jack your compression too high unless you're just having fun. If you're having fun, give her, uh, sky's the limit. The only way to know the limit friends is to blow stuff up. And that's true, right? You never know. Um, okay. So I want to talk about the timing numbers. I'm going to bring you guys in close. I want to talk about what I'm going to do with this saw. Okay. Yes, I got some oil on it. Okay, 268 giveaway saw, highway 50 millimeter top up. So that's pop up, that's this top end. Timing numbers. Without a base gasket, hun or 10 and a half thousand squish. That is about 10 thousandths too tight. So right there, we ran into problems already. Exhaust, 104 after top dead center, 152 duration. Transfers 120 after top dead center. This top end stock only has 16 degrees of blowdown. Um, I would like in the low 20s minimum on this build. Okay, I want more blowdown. I ne friends, I never want less blowdown. I always want more. Again, these are the things that two stroke builders uh, go back and forth about. That's just how I build saws, and uh, I'm going to keep doing it that way. I like a low blowdown saw, especially with a short stroke. Try both ways and uh, see which one you like. That's how I learned. Uh, I've done, I've done, uh, I've done short blowdown and high blow or in long blowdown in these saws, and uh, I really like the long blowdown better. Intake seventy four before top dead center, one hundred forty eight duration. Okay, these numbers are good, except for I'm not happy with the blowdown and I'm not happy with the squish. We would like the squish at, I don't know, 
Okay, 20 thousandths would be the magic number, okay? So with Moto Seal, we're gonna gain two to three thousandths. So if we had 18 thousandths on this number, we'd be happy. So we're seven and a half thousandths short, okay? Now I also put a gasket in it. Squish is 22 thou with a gasket, it's perfect. Exhaust 103 after top dead center, 154 duration. So the exhaust opens, again friends, okay, the exhaust opens sooner because the cylinder is physically higher, right? Does that make sense? All right, with a base gasket, if you raise the cylinder probably about a degree, it's going to open a degree sooner. And in this saw, about 10 degrees, somewhere around 10 degrees is one degree of timing, or Ten thousandths is one degree of timing. So again, we we raised it up, so we have 103 now. This piece of paper isn't very good. Transfers are 119 after top dead center. So again, the transfers open one degree sooner. The exhaust opens one degree sooner, and our intake is 73 before top dead center. Okay, let's look here. Okay, so I did a little work for you guys. Actually, let's just do it brand new. Okay, so with a base gasket, this is all the good stuff that you do before you start porting and your, your chances of success should be better. I'm just gonna write all the stuff. Okay, I wrote it all down for you guys. I'm gonna say you don't have a lathe, okay? And I'll tell you what I what I can do with a lathe on this saw, okay? Easily. You don't have a lathe and you want to build a saw and you have timing numbers like this, okay? Remember, our blowdown, our blowdown is right now 16 degrees, okay? 16 degrees. That, to me, is too short. Remember, this is short stroke saw. The shorter the stroke, the less you're pumping the bottom end before it opens, right? Right? Think think about it. Okay, let's say in easy terms. Okay, let's push this all the way down. Okay, let's say the transfers are way higher, okay? Okay, let's say the transfers are that high. The exhaust opens, transfers open, okay, if it's shorter. Now think about that. You're only compressing the bottom end from there to there, okay? The shorter the stroke, the less you're squeezing your crankcase volume. Does that make sense? Okay, because the piston travels down for less time. I want more blowdown because I want to get this exhaust out. I want to give this more time, A, to get the exhaust flowing sooner, get more exhaust out because my pump is my pump. I can only pump so much bottom end because of the crank. It's too short, right? These are short stroke saws. What you'll find is, or what I find, and I can only speak about what I've done, you start raising these transfers in this class of saw, you'll get a saw that it'll scream, it'll, but it'll be really peaky. And they tend to go lean when they get hot. In a, in a work production setting, you'll be tuning that thing all the time is what I find. Okay. So, we have a pop-up. Let's say, let's say we run this at 98, okay. That's about as far as I would go on this saw. If you're new, if you're new, I would tell you to do 100, okay. Now, at 98, if we do 98, that's 162 duration. Intake, I don't want to go heavy intake on this saw. I want to keep it snappy. I'd like 75 or 76 on the intake, okay, before top dead center. And again, if we add two degrees, that's four in the duration, 150. 
152. We could go we could go 77. 77 would be 154. Okay. Um, I don't want to go much more than that. Not for this application. So we could easily do that with just porting. Now, if we put the exhaust at 98, okay, if we have 16 degrees of blowdown, we'll have 21 degrees of blowdown at 98. Okay, because we're increasing the distance between when the exhaust opens and the transfers. Now, if you have a lathe, okay, if you have a lathe and you want to correct all this stuff, well, with the base gasket, we have 22 degrees of, or we have 22 thousandths of squish, right? 22 thou squish. I hope you guys are getting something out of this. I want to show you the method. This is what I do before I port every saw. I do a bunch of math and from my previous experiences, and I guess it's, it's an educated guess on what the saw is going to do. Okay, so with a gasket, it's 22 thou. Without a gasket, it's, it's 10 and a half thou, right? Well, it's 10, 10 thou, we'll say, okay? If I want to run this without a gasket, I'm going to cut, okay, here's your piston. I'm going to cut 10 thousandths off of here, okay, here and here on my lathe. That will give us another 10 thou of pop-up and that will lower where the exhaust opens. I haven't done a video like this in a while. It's kind of fun. Okay, remember, if you cut this lower, your exhaust opens sooner. Okay, it'll open there instead of there. That will give me a higher exhaust roof without actually grinding. Okay, so if I take 10 thou off here, the exhaust will open a degree sooner. If I do that, I fix everything but I don't fix my squish, right? Or I fix my squish, but I don't fix my blowdown, right? If the exhaust opens one degree sooner, so will my transfers, right? Because you're cutting all of this. So the better way to do it would be to machine this, machine this base, chuck it in my lathe and cut. I can cut however much I want. As long as I don't start getting too thin here, I could cut 20 thou off here, right? I could cut 20 thou off there and 30 thou or 20 thou off here and match up my squish, right? So if my squish is 10 thou with no base gasket, okay? And I need another 10 thou on this, right? Stock, if I cut 10 thou off here and nothing off here, that'll correct my squish. If I cut 20 thou off here, this will be 10 thou too short, which means I'd have to cut 30 thousandths off here to get my squish. If I have enough material from here to here, I can do that. Okay, so you can cut both this or just port it. There's three ways to build a saw. And the fourth way is you can cut your combustion chamber. I typically don't reshape combustion chambers because again, I like I don't like high compression saws. Uh, I, I find for me it's not needed. So, okay, friends. Okay, so that brings you guys up to speed on what we're doing here. I don't know which I'm going to do on this. Um, I have to decide. I could, I could cut this base, if I cut this 20 degrees, that'll give me about two, de two degrees of timing, right? So my intake will open two degrees sooner, which again is what I want anyways. My exhaust will open two degrees later, but I have to go back in. I have to go back in and cut 30 thou off here. Then I'll have a 20 thou squish, right? So I might end up doing that. I will. If I cut this top here, I'll get a bigger pop-up, which means this thing will be stronger. Now, why not do all that? Well, first of all, I like to keep things simple when I'm showing you guys builds. Some of the, some of the, you know, crazy builds that I do, they involve all of that plus other things. I like to keep builds like this simple. I want this to be attainable for the average guy. Not everybody has a lathe. 
a lathe is a super expensive tool um, and they're they're heavy and tooling you got to be pretty serious about um, chainsaw work to buy a lathe so I don't expect you guys to own a lathe I think what I'm gonna do with this saw is run it with a base gasket okay keep it simple run it with a base gasket we're gonna port the living snot out of the transfers like I like to do. Reshape them, cut them lower, and get more volume and more flow. I'm going to leave this piston stock the way it is. And uh, let's try and do just a port job. No machine work. Nothing like that. This saw has a big carburetor on it out of the box. We can make a lot of power, and I'll show you guys. We'll make a lot of power without actually doing any machine work on this build. Another way that you can get your intake timing is to cut the bottom of your piston skirt, okay? So, again, you can get timing. I'm just trying to reiterate all this uh, for the new folks that are just getting into this. You can get your timing by lowering your cylinder. That'll get you your intake timing. That'll also lower your exhaust port. Depending on what you're doing, you might want to lower exhaust port, okay? Machine the cylinder. That gets you more intake timing, less exhaust timing. Then you cut your pop-up, that gives you more compression, okay? And then you can cut your piston skirt to give you additional intake timing, okay? Um, I like to make these things flow air, a lot of air. The more air, the better is, is the type of porting I do. So to me, let's see, what can we do with a 268 highway cylinder, highway piston? This is all off the, off the shelf parts that anybody can buy. Let's see what we can do with that. We're in the next video, we're gonna grind and I'll show you guys exactly what I did, how I lay it out, and we'll do another build together. Anyhow, this one's gone on long enough. I'm super happy to jump back into this. As always, thanks for watching, take her easy. The next video will be me porting this power saw. Later.